Good morning. I praise the Lord this morning. I've had a really, really interesting week. So, let's start off with, let's go with Friday. No, let's go Thursday. Thursday. Let's go Thursday. Nope, it was Friday. Yep, yep, it's Friday. It started Friday. So, Friday morning, my husband goes to work. I'm looking at the refrigerator thinking, you know, I wish it was, you know, you know, sometimes you want a mayonnaise sandwich. I didn't have bread. I didn't have mayonnaise. So I said, well, okay, then maybe I'll make an egg. And didn't have no egg. Uh, okay, toast. Didn't have no bread. Okay. Peanut butter and crackers. Didn't have no crackers. Serve and peanut butter and a spoon. Couldn't buy a spoon. Decide to give up on eating. That was the next thing. So. I decided that. I was going to make phone calls. And do some stuff. That I need to get done. So I ended up calling. A church. To see about what time they open. What they believe in. And yada yada yada. Well the dude calls me back. Let's name that dude because otherwise I'll get confused later talking about it. His name was Kevin. So I called him and he called me back and I asked him what kind of church is it? You know, what do they believe in? What's their standards? And then I asked him like 10 questions. Randomly weird. Had nothing really to do with anything. But the answering of his questions, of the questions that I asked him, had an alternative line. Because so many people believe certain things, but they fail to miss God's whole idea of it. And so when I asked randomly weird questions, it was kind of nice to hear a randomly weird answer. So it was really refreshing, right? So as I proceed to sit there and talking to him and praying, I hear out the window, I hear what I thought was the air conditioner leaking and didn't think much of it. And then I heard the washer kick off in the kitchen and I was doing laundry, so I didn't think nothing of it. So I kept talking to this man. I was on the phone with him for about 45 minutes. Praying and talking, praying and talking. Well, I get up, suddenly I felt the urge to go potty, because you know I have to be. So I get up and I go through the house to go potty. As I proceed to walk into my bedroom and into my kitchen, I walk into a six-inch deep water puddle. And let me remind you, myself that I was not doing laundry. I was washing dishes in the dishwasher and evidently somehow or another the pressure of the faucet blew the top of the faucet off. So for that 45 minutes that I was talking to Kevin, my kitchen was flooding. And I never knew it. So I go in and I panic, of course, you know, because this just scared the holy out of me. So I run outside and holler at my daughter. My daughter comes running over and she goes and she stands in the middle of the water until finally she figures out where the shut-off aisle is and she shuts it off. 
my kitchen is flooded. There's water beaming off the roof. I made a joke that evidently I was being baptized in my kitchen. Well, I was telling my daughter what I was doing because she asked me what was I doing and why did I get in there sooner. And I told her why I was on the phone talking to Gavin. And we, I was crying and praying and stuff. And she's like, Lord, Mommy, you can't do that in this house. You stir up the demons in this house and this, everything's going to go crazy. I'm like, nah, there ain't no demons in here. I mean, we good. You know, cause God got me. I don't know about nobody else, but he got me. I'm okay. Oh, I'm not really sure how to take what happened after that. Well, a little bit later, my son shows up and he looks at his sister and tells his sister that, uh, that I need to get the demons out of my faucet. It's like, okay. So she comes to tell me what her brother says after me and her had the conversation of me and Kevin having a conversation, which led to prayers, which led to casting Satan out of my house. Okay? Okay? Well... We were okay. And then I looked at my daughter and I told her, I said, well, you know, I cast him out of your house, so you might want to go check your faucet. <laughs> she said, oh, Mom, she says, I don't believe in that. She says, I don't believe. She said, yeah, oh, God this, God that. She said, but I don't believe that there's demons in the world that's out to get you kind of thing. And I'm like, ooh. Yeah, I... I, I'm sorry, I probably wouldn't have said that. But you do you, boo, because I can't go to heaven for you. She looks at me, she laughs, she sits down on my couch. Her boyfriend's in the kitchen doing whatever he was doing, trying to clean up the water. About that time, I, out of the corner of my eye, I see somebody jump in her car. I'm like, son, somebody's still in your car! She's like, what? And she jumps up, she runs outside. Jonathan runs outside. Jonathan runs for the car. And he grabs the whole door and he climbs almost in the car. And the guy had a knife. And the guy threatened to stab him. And so Jonathan, like, kind of backed up enough to try to hold on to the car. And he was running along the car, screaming at the man that his cell phone, his wallet, you know, let him get the car seats, whatever, out of the car and he could have it. Well, the guy persists to keep on going. Well, Jonathan fell, and the dude drugged Jonathan almost a block up the road. And then Jonathan hit his head, and he has seizures, and his health condition is not that good. But that boy held on to that car. And so he comes back. Now, y'all, y'all did hear what my daughter said, right? You did, right? Well, anyways, the police shows up, the uh, ambulance shows up for Jonathan. Thank good Lord, he's got big gaping holes on his body, but nothing that was life-threatening at that time. Evidently, he ended up with a major concussion from hitting the concrete. And uh, he had dislocated a couple of things, bruised a lot of things, and needed stitches. But uh, he, he was alive. Well, thank God for that. My daughter come over and she looked at me. And she goes, Mommy, she said, please stop doing that. I said, doing what? She says, please don't tell me that there's demons in my house. I said, well, they might not be now because they done ran off in your car, baby. She's like, Mommy, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? And I looked at her and I'll tell you what. Life 360, get it. Get your phone, put it in your car, 
and leave it on. Leave it charging. Hide it somewhere in your car. Hook Life360 up to that phone and just let it run. If somebody gets in your car and they, and, and, uh, they don't know that you have it in there, so they can't take it apart or take it out or throw it out, well, thank the good Lord, they were able to track this young man down to a T of where he was at because of Life360. So, once they got him, pulled him over, I don't know his name, I don't know who he was. All I know is that this young man was a, a repo guy, which was fine. The car may or may not have been, she owed $800, they may or may not have been repoed. Okay, so, the cops pulls him over, and... So the cops decide, you know, this is state of Ohio versus state of Kentucky. You know, you don't have no standards here. You should have called us. We would have helped you. And then you wouldn't have to go through all this. Well, they didn't choose that. They chose to do it their way. So by doing that, they ended up dragging Jonathan down the road. And during all this being said and done, uh, the dude, however, was arrested for vehicle assault. Yeah. I definitely, if I would, if you're going to repo a car from any other state than the one you live in and the one that you know the laws, I recommend you finding out the laws. I also recommend you having an officer meet you at the property where you're going so that you can legally by law obtain the vehicle without hurting anyone and especially a young father this man drug him down the road with his six-year-old standing in the yard screaming my daddy okay this traumatized this child but Evidently, the dude got charged with assault. I'm guessing it was $400 for the police to have the truck car towed and then pound it. It's $150 a day. Okay, so just the tow bill itself is three quarters of how much she owed on the car. And then $150 a day, two days, and the tow bill would have paid the car off. Okay, well now, the car sitting in pound, the kids have got what they needed out of the vehicle, thank the good Lord. But the people who own that car is now going to have to pay upwards of five to $75,000 to get their worker out of jail. Because he didn't want to do it legally or the proper way. He chose to do it quick and easy and just get away with it. Well, these were two young children who don't, who are like clearly unemployed mommy and daddies who is busting a butt to survive, doing the best they possibly can. And you're going to come up on them with a knife. The boy just got out of the car with his toddler, with his three-year-old baby. I mean, please, people, what is the world coming to? To the point where you bring a knife to a repo. That's intent. That's you intending to hurt somebody. It's so weird. I just, I, I don't understand things. Or I just get to the point where I don't even care anymore. I don't know. So when you would think this was enough, right? So, so now you've got the water pipe bus or the faucet buses. You got the car being tugged. You got the boy being drugged. Okay, now this is just Friday. Friday. Okay, so. 
I'm like, okay, y'all get away from me. I need to relax. I need to rest. It's too much for me to handle. So Saturday comes along, and I'm like, okay, I'm good. I, I, I'm, I'm traumatized from the water being in the kitchen. I, I have no clue where to start to even uh, begin to clean that up. Uh, my anxiety, my nerves, everything is just absolutely insane. Insane. I'm telling you, it's insane. So, Saturday comes. Saturday, it goes through pretty much roughly normal. Well, then it starts thunder. Anybody else was in that thunder? My daughter calls me. She said, Mommy, do you think there's any more demons in this house? I said, Don't say that! This house is infested with them! I guarantee you there's still more in here. We just ain't found them yet. And she goes, Mommy, will you pray real quick over the house so we can make sure that, you know, the Lord's getting all of them out? And I'm like, Well, I thought you didn't believe in that. She goes, I don't know, Mommy, but you, you seem to be hitting it right on the head. I'm like, okay. So I looked over at Dad, and I was like, okay, Daddy, you want to pray? And he's like, sure, I'll pray. He went to praying. Boy, he was just getting in it. I turned around, and I heard something. And I started looking around, like, to check my surroundings, right? Because I've already been through this once. So my husband says, what's that noise? I said, I don't, maybe it's the cat. So I got up to walk through the house to go see if it was my cats. <laughs> it wasn't my cats. <laughs> and then like, my kitchen was raining. The whole ceiling come in. And <laughs> my kitchen again. Oh, I was standing there in the middle of the kitchen and it pouring down rain on my head. My husband hollers through the house and said, what's going on, honey? I said, ain't nothing. Satan just trying to tear us down again. He went, what? He come running through the house and he gets into the kitchen and he's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, why, why is this happening? I said, because you were praying. He goes, what's me praying going to do with this happening? I said, because when I was praying, the faucet blew. When she denied, didn't believe in Jesus, the car got stolen. When he, oop. Oop Troop said something about he wished I would change the channel. He got drugged down the road. And when you went to praying, the ceilings opened up and a tree come through. Because this house, honey, let me tell you what. God's working on this house. He is because Satan's a tearing it apart. Piece by piece thinking we're going to tuck our tails and just let it go and go his way and do his thing. But honey, let me tell you what, after making this video, if I post it, if I don't, but after making this video, I will update you if anything else crazy happens. Lord of mercy. So I walked from the kitchen into the bathroom because I had the potty. All this water is making me gotta go pee. I opened the bathroom door. <laughs> yeah! That tree come through the window. <laughs> and water just pouring down my bathtub. Okay, so we get up and we go to church next morning. Yeah, buddy, I went to church. Don't think I did. After all this stuff going on, I needed a fresher course because I needed to be strong in here and here to tackle what I'm dealing with here. So go to church. Okay. I come home. And evidently, the neighbor 
tree fell on his house and went through his roof. Praise Lord. I don't praise God that the tree fell on his house and it might have hurt him. I praise God they didn't fall mine. <laughs> God bless you, and I hope you enjoyed hanging out and listening to my weekend. Praise the Lord. God bless you.